From Poachers to Protectors, a case study on the transformation of a community for waterfowl and wetland conservation. I'm Yami Bujwal, and I will be taking you through the journey of Mangra Jori. The Central Asian Flyaway, or the CAF, is the shortest flyaway for migratory birds in the world, lying entirely within the Northern Hemisphere, connecting a large swathe of the Palearctic with the Indian subcontinent. More than 300 species travel along the Central Asian Flyaway. Unfortunately, many of the world's migratory birds are in decline and the reasons are many. Migratory birds are reliant on favorable weather conditions and must find sufficient food resources at multiple sites throughout their migratory journey. The Central Asian Flyaway is the most poorly studied flyaway with little known about the status of the birds which use it. It is likely, however, that many populations are in decline and there are currently several species regarded as globally threatened. Over the full length of the flyaway, important habitats for migratory birds are being rapidly degraded by a range of anthropogenic or human-induced threats. Wetlands are a particularly imperiled for reason, various reasons. India has a strategic role in the flyaway as it provides critical stopover sites to over 90% of the bird species known to use this migratory route. Bangla Jodi in Chilika Lake is one of such critical wintering sites for migratory waterfowl. Chilika Lake in the state of Orissa is unique from the perspective of avifaunal diversity. This Ramsar wetland harbors many species of birds, many of which are residents in this largest brackish water lake in Asia. Spread over 1,16,500 hectares with over 80 islands, it is connected to the Bay of Bengal from its northeastern side and was declared as a Ramsar site in 1981. Its significance lies in the fact that it is the largest wintering area for migratory waterfowl in the Indian subcontinent, accounting for about 1.1 million individuals as estimated in the most recent state, uh, census of 2021. Its extensive wetland coverage provides pristine biodiversity in avifauna and aquatic animals sheltering huge congregations of migratory birds from as far as Siberia and Mongolia. Its diverse vegetation is attributed to the wide variance in water depth and the delicate and fragile interdependence among species. Accounting for over 800 species of fauna, 200 species of avifauna with 225 species of fish and 710 plant species. The Asian Dowitcher, Goliath Heron, White Spoonbill, Spoonbill Sandpiper, Osprey, Indian skimmer, Palasis fish eagle, spot-billed pelican, and the white-bellied sea eagle, which has been featured here, have been some of the bird species which frequent the wetlands of Chilika Lake. Along with them, it also houses the Irrawaddy dolphin, fishing cat, skinks, and smooth-coated otter. Located 60 kilometers from the capital city of Bhuvneshwar, Mangla Jodi is one of the many villages located in and around Chilika Lake and is located about five kilometers from the village of Tangi in Khorda district. Primarily a freshwater zone with marshes, emergent vegetation and reed beds consisting mostly of typha and phragmite skarka, Mangla Jodi is connected to the northern sector of Chilika Lake and Kalupara Ghat by way of channels dug through the phragmite skarka reed bed. With 300 families having fishing as the major occupation, primarily sourced from the open waters with some freshwater fishes being harvested in the canals. The extensive reed lining of waterways and channels provides an excellent habitation for roosting, nesting and breeding activities for species like Eurasian coots, moorhens, migratory bitterns, warblers and other species of dabbling ducks like pintails and shovelers alike. This coupled with the abundant supply of aquatic food supports and makes it one of the three major congregation sites for every fauna in Chilika. Apart from fishing, people are also involved in agriculture. Mangla Jodi in early 1990s was spotted to have tremendous potential as a wildlife habitat and as a tourism hotspot even today. Some problems associated with this were identified to be increasing human pressure and footprint and associated unsustainable infrastructural development. However, the issue of poaching, reed harvesting, and illegal trade of bird meat using guns, poisoning, nets, and traps became one of the major concerns threatening the integrity of this sensitive ecosystem. There used to be around 80 poachers in the village who regularly sold their gains in open markets at varying rates depending on the species and method of killing employed. 
as this was a fruitful business to the poachers, this in turn caused huge damage to the wetland habitat due to the rampant removal of water birds. Moreover, the collection of eggs, their sale, and slaughtering of migratory and resident waterfowl species was noticed to have been the target of not only Manglajori poachers, but also those from nearby villages of Sorana. This was socially accepted as a means of living and had inadequate staffing of guards to combat the wildlife crimes that ensued. The arduous path of restoration followed an intricate strategy of sensitization, intervention, awareness, and solutioning. India has witnessed many approaches at wildlife conservation. In most cases in India, there are government-initiated measures at conserving India's natural heritage, an initiative to address the problem of poaching of waterfowl and ensuring their conservation, including that of their habitat, has been carried out by Wild Orissa, an organization which outside the environment, outside the government, and deals with conservation activities since 1996. Understanding that the involvement of poachers and hunters who are major stakeholders in illicit poaching and traffic and trade in wildlife, efforts were successfully made to ensure their participation in containing poaching of waterfowl in Chilika Lake. Wild Orissa constituted a bird protection committee called the Sri Sri Mahavir Pakshi Suraksha Samiti in the year 2000. At the same time, what was also critical was that Wild Orissa facilitated the involvement of Odisha Wildlife Department, Chilika Development Authority, Bombay Natural History Society, etc., who provided resources and expertise in this initiative. This initiative at waterfall conservation with the participation of poachers and hunters is a model that is unique in its practice in Indian conservation history. In a complex world of conflicting demands placed by multifarious consuming factors, conservation of wetlands and their biodiversity is one of paramount importance. Certain important aspects require to be put in place, which includes ensuring that one-time poachers and hunters are involved at every stage, holding regular consultations with local stakeholders, introducing sustainable activities which are not detrimental to the local ecology, introducing environmentally friendly practices, organizing strong awareness programs, effective coordination with government agencies, facilitating an effective media and civil society interface, and providing a strong base for research and putting in place an effective feedback mechanism were of primary importance. This approach in wildlife conservation has ensured empowering local community in conservation of biodiversity by making lawbreakers as primary stakeholders in lawful implementation of public policy. Raising awareness through conservation activities involving committees were undertaken along with sessions on avifauna and wetlands. Finding a sustainable solution to the shift of the method of income generation for families was identified to be of utmost importance and thus by ensuring income for the poachers turned conservationists, this could help mitigate the poor economic conditions and ensure their continuous involvement in waterfowl conservation. In this way, ecotourism was initiated with the assistance of Chilika Development Authority during 2002 with gradual infrastructural buildup and associated recognition building activities. Methodology. The methodology adopted in Mangla Jori involved the following. Direct intervention by way of apprehending poachers operating in the waters of Chilika Lake in and around Mangla Jori with prior information on such activities along with members of Wild Orissa and forest staff. Monitoring with members of Wild Orissa in the waters, especially in the poaching prone areas adjoining Mangla Jori waters in both motorboats as well as in boats procured from local sources. Patrolling with members at Wild Orissa and forest staff during odd hours against poaching of bird eggs, holding of regular meetings with the members of the Bird Protection Committee of Mangla Jodi, holding meetings with the forest staff of Tangi Wildlife Range and Mangla Jodi section, outing with visiting students from the Bombay Natural History Society, etc., to breeding habitats, involvement of school children in boat excursions to the bird breeding habitats, organizing competitions on Chilika Lake and its birds among school children of the area seeking interventions from the Chief Wildlife Warden, Irrigation Department, Chilika Development Authority, etc., on the fragile waterfowl breeding habitats, and ensuring some income generation for the poacher turned conservationists, which could help mitigate the poor economic conditions of these people. The exercise of conservation has had a ripple effect, including that of recharging the food chain, sustainability of delicate ecosystem, ensuring generation of gainful employment for the local people, acting as a beacon for initiation of similar practices 
around the world as a carbon sink and as a measure for recharging and underground aquifers. One of the critical achievements in this conservation of wetlands and biodiversity is the improvement of socio-economic conditions of the local community. Rarely has our wildlife conservation model involving one-time hunters has been successful, and that was sustained for over a decade. Mongla Jodi is famous for its birds, and people come over from all across the world to see them in their natural surroundings. Here we can gauge the, fig the figures and dramatic increase in the bird, in bird numbers from 2001 onwards. The outcomes were noted in near elimination of poaching linked to the village, massive increase in avifauna presence, and a sustainable model to promote socioeconomic growth. This in turn was linked to the strong enforcement of strict ecotourism protocols with active involvement from CDA, Forest Department, and BNHS, who also provided important infrastructural support. The strong community ownership ensured conservation and self-sustenance since 2003. Mongla Jodi is today one of the India's top world wildlife tourism destinations having been placed firmly in the tourist circuit. The critical and catalytic role played by Wild Orissa in a novel initiative of weaning away poachers and hunters from the perennial problem of poaching and ensuring an alternative livelihood for them has been documented as case studies. In 1996, Sri Nanda Kishore Bhujbal, along with some more persons who later came together to constitute Wild Orissa, had visited Mangla Jodi village, which revealed the existing situation of rampant poaching and thus led to several arrests by authorities. During this period from 1996 from 1999, intensive interactions were undertaken by Wild Orissa with Mangla Jodi inhabitants for the purpose of sensitization and gaining confidence, thereby converting the poachers. From 2000 onwards, with the advent of Sri Sri Mahavet Pakshi Suraksa Samiti, poaching was finally brought under control, supported by the self-sustainable ecotourism model, which finally culminated with large rewards of increasing bird population. In 2003, after being taken up by Wild Orissa, Mongla Jodi was notified as an important bird area, being one of the six IBAs notified in the state of Orissa under a global initiative for bird conservation with BNHS, BirdLife International, Government of Orissa, and Government of India. These efforts were met with several accolades and recognitions like the Pakshi Bandhu Award and Biju Patnaik Wildlife Conservation Award by the Government of Orissa. This is the story in pictures. Our continued focus has been on marking inviolent water food breeding habitats and restricting tourism to designated waterways to pro provide minimal disturbance. Planting local fruit bearing trees for bird species and stricter law enforcement by local communities and authorities has also been tactful to ensure the ideals of sustaining and retaining the core objective. By providing alternative income generating options and providing a transparent approach, it has been ensured that efficiency, equity, effectiveness, and economy are achieved. The latent benefit of ingraining a sense of self-work, voluntary approach, self-induced discipline, etc., while undertaking waterfall and wildlife conservation work by the villages of Mangla Jodi also led to self-belief and self-importance, all of which has led to the stage where a brigade of conservation for the wilderness has been achieved. Today, commerce and business interests and private inter initiatives appear to gain public space, but Mangla Jodi is a shining example of sustainability, effectiveness, longevity, and perseverance. It is Wild Orissa's endeavor that it continues to practice them. Thank you. Thank you.